Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 57 of the Cloud Computing Training Show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and the internationally recognized number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that Google Cloud has announced an array of initiatives aimed at closing a shortfall in developers with the skills for cloud-based computing. In a blog post, the director of Google Cloud Learning and Enablement stated the issue must be urgently addressed if companies are going to be successful in transitioning their computing to cloud-based environments. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and this is like the third time we talked about a big public cloud provider doing this. It was AWS first, uh, I think Alibaba second, uh, and now it's Google and I'm sure we're going to see Microsoft uh, next with people um, you know, giving away training in essence to get people on the cloud because we just don't have enough people out there to know how to deploy this stuff and the skill shortage is killing us right now. So true, so true. The, the hard to find people are hard to find, unless you're me. I find all the hard people, so uh, drop me a line if you need some hard to find people as a, a selfish plug there. So anyway, um, so the opening question then is, do you think public cloud providers should be the driver behind all this cloud training? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I think they should be part of the drivers and I think, but they're going to be, have their own selfish interests. So I, I don't suspect that Google is doing this for uh, international peace. I mean, they're doing this to get people, you know, up and running on their cloud-based systems so they understand how to deal with the Google-based services. And this is probably a step in the right direction because I know a lot of people out there know a lot of AWS people who, under, who have AWS certified and, you know, have those skills and certainly Microsoft. And I think Google's kind of trailing and I think their ability to get more people out there to understand the technology. And when I learned it a couple of years ago uh, on different projects, I was impressed with it. And so when you sit down and learn the technology that Google has internally, the Google Cloud Platform, uh, you'll end up giving them a chance on different projects. And so what they're doing is kind of a soft sell thing. Uh, they're leading thought by training people on how to uh, use their technology and use cloud in general. Um, but I think it's going to make cloud, you know, pe people, once they learn, understand Google, they can transfer to AWS. And once they understand AWS, can transfer to Google. You know, a lot of this, the concepts are, are very much the same, even though the implementations are very different. So I think it's a step in the right direction. I get a little concerned, though, when only people are learning from the public cloud providers. And so you have cloud guru, lynda.com, that I, that I record for, and, and other, you know, cloud uh, training programs out there that are, not a, connected with a particular cloud provider. And uh, that's kind of a cool thing as well, because you understand architecture, you understand how to make critical decisions, you understand how to think critically about the different cloud providers, you get uh, advice as to what the differences are between Microsoft and Google and AWS and Alibaba and when to use what, where, when, how. Uh, those sorts of things are gonna be missing from this, I suspect. And, I, I, and even if they're there, I, I probably wouldn't, you know, they're not they're, they're not uh, objective things. They're, they have a, they have a bias there because you know they they own the cloud that they're uh, teaching to leverage. So I think that I, it's not necessarily a bad thing that the public cloud providers are doing this. I think they shouldn't be the only voice in town. And certainly, if they're going to invest so much money in this, that the little you know training companies, uh, the cloud gurus, the Lindas, you know the other folks out there that are doing the training, you know kind of go away because they can't compete with free and can't compete with someone who's able to spend. You know, uh, you know, um, twenty billion dollars on a cloud-based program, um, then that's going to be uh, not good. I, I think that ultimately we need to have that ob ob objectivity. We need to have courses, things like that. I wish I could say that the universities and colleges all over the world would take over and you know provide a objective training, but I think they're they're going to partner with these guys and probably use their content just because they don't have a lot of money. They you know they don't have a lot of expertise in cloud-based systems. Professors there, you know, aren't really keeping up with it as much as they should. There's some company uh, college universities doing very well with it, but most are not. So they're not going to save us. So I still think it should be a balance. She'll think it should be a balance between public cloud providers providing some of the training they're able to do for free. And the uh, independent uh, training companies are able to basically provide the independent training. But, you know, this is why I tell the independent training companies, I think, stay, you know, out of the public cloud explanations. If you're sitting down and doing a detailed explanation of a particular public cloud, uh, the public cloud providers are probably doing that content right now. Chances are you're not going to be as good as they are because it's their stuff. 
and you're not going to be able to keep up as quickly as they do. So you need to get some evergreen content around architecture and security concepts and things like that. And then these guys can you know, tell us about the details of the cloud-based systems. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. 100% on this one, Dave. I, I'm, I'm with you on this. I think there needs to be that variety out there of, of points of learning uh, rather than it be a, a cartel. Or it's already a cartel when it comes to the big three of uh, almost controlling the cloud. Uh, but essentially, from a training point of view, the, the, the smaller ones that you mentioned uh, uh, are, are, are vital really to underpin, uh, you know, more of a generalist approach than just uh, specific to the, you know, a brand as it were. And, and we've highlighted this a couple of times actually in, in previous shows. Uh, so if you've if you've missed out and you haven't seen those shows, viewers or listeners, please go back and watch those. But we've we've touched on um, Amazon Web Services quite heavily in the, which has now been integrated into certain uh, universities and uh, for for actual certifications um, within those universities. So in your opinion, do you think we're going to start seeing Google now? I mean, you picked on it just a second ago, but do you think we're going to start seeing a choice of Amazon, Google and Azure or Microsoft as, as choices within a, a curriculum or something, Dave? I hope so. I, I think that um, you, you have to be able to teach all of them if you teach one of them now. So uh, obviously Google's in third or fourth place, depending on you know who you, who you talk to, but they're catching them quick in the market. And even the ability to kind of understand how three work, I think that's a nice number. If I understand how two work, that's probably not uh, as uh, uh, open-minded as I should be. But if I understand three or four and how they can be in the business, that's kind of a nice group of uh, competitors that are out there and understanding how they do different things. So, you know, were I teaching a class on cloud computing, I would include examples on every one of them. Uh, so I even did that in the lynda.com courses. So in other words, if I would, you know, talked about you know, storage systems, I showed people how storage systems work within Google and Amazon and Microsoft and compare it and contrast them and understand the, the similarities, which are many, and the differences, which are many. And I think that's helpful um, because when I, g going out there and making critical decisions about what technology cloud services to leverage, I'm not necessarily limited by uh, the, um, you know, limited by the cloud services that, uh, you know, are being pushed my way or a single provider out there. And so, yeah, I think universities have a tendency to do that. They, they have a tendency to, to go te cheap on the technology and look at one way of doing something. But now with cloud-based technology and also, in essence, the cloud providers basically giving them as much services they need to use to teach them or have trials on them, there's no reason you can't start doing all three. I think it's just lazy teaching if they only teach one or teach two. So this is something where we need to kind of keep this in mind and have our own self-policing. There can't be a single cloud thread through a particular training program, because if you do that, you're not arming the people with any kind of a helpful knowledge and going out there and solving problems. You're just teaching them a skill, which is going to have a shelf life of about a year. Yeah, so very true, so very true. And I mean, Amazon have, have gone into the universities, uh, maybe, uh, maybe Google will go into secondary schools. Uh, just to play a bit more of a, a yeah. catch up between, the, uh, between that third and fourth place with Alibaba, what do you think? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Microsoft at preschool. That was kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. They'll be sponsoring the milk bottles at school. <laughs> yeah, they all, they all have uh, good cloud-based systems, you know, differences in the amount of services they offer, you know, things like that. But they're, they're becoming more like each other as they're starting to mature. And so I think people, the more people understand that and understand the differences and understand the likenesses, uh, the better off we're going to be. Yeah, 100%. Look, Dave, thanks so much. And look, it moves us on nicely to your top three tips, uh, which will be perfect. Yeah, number one, focus on you and not what the cloud providers think. And I think that's what we're talking about here. It's This is kind of defensive learning. So one of the things that's easiest to do, and we kind of saw this with the Apple computers back in the uh, 80s, they donated computers to every school out there and they had Apple's um, and so guess what the kids wanted when they got out of school? They wanted Apple computers. They didn't want, you know, IBM based computers. The reality is they didn't focus on what they needed. They kind of focused on what people were giving them. And I think that's probably the wrong thing to do. You have to have critical thinking how you're dealing with the different technologies and understand that they're providing technologies, in this case training, that are going to be in their own selfish interest. And so there has to be, which is not a bad thing because we're getting something for free. We're getting value for value. But there has to be some sort of a trade-off, some critical thinking in terms of how you're dealing with that uh, that that free stuff people are giving you. Uh, don't focus on a single provider, and I can't stress that enough. And if you're teaching class, you know, if you're only teaching AWS, 
you're not providing any kind of valuable training. You're not necessarily providing the ability to have critical thinking in different ways and looking at the technology. Also, it's not interesting. I just don't think that looking at one piece of technology, you know, that's changing as fast as AWS or Google or Microsoft is necessarily going to get me in a place where I can go out and get a job and really provide value to my employer because all I'm doing is providing a skill to work a particular set of technology. I'm not providing the critical thinking that they need me to do to think about which storage system to use, which um, you know, we talked about multi-cloud a couple of shows ago, which storage system to use, security system to use, how it kind of works and plays well together. If we're going to end up in a multi-cloud world, which we're going to end up in a multi-cloud world, you need to have several different skill sets. You need to have, be able to compare and contrast the different ones out there. So it's going to be uh, you know, a poly-cloud world, and you have to kind of figure out how that's going to work. Keep in mind that the uh, best-paying jobs are multi-cloud. Uh, so we talked about multi-cloud and some of the complexity trade-offs uh, in the last show. Uh, the nice thing about multi-cloud, if you understand multi-cloud and you can uh, talk intelligently about multi-cloud and understand the tool sets, um, people may not understand it, but they need it. Um, so people who have skill sets, even if it's jack of all trades, master and none between the different cloud providers out there, are typically going to be more valuable to the companies than someone with just deep skill sets in a particular cloud provider. So your ability to get an eclectic array of cloud skills, understand things from an architectural level, be able to compare and contrast them, use them in a sentence, be able to talk to people through what the differences are, is going to be way more valuable than your ability to be a specialist in AWS storage or Google storage or Microsoft storage. Three fantastic points there, Dave. Love them, love them. I think they're, you, you've highlighted pretty much everything that the people would need to pick up at the moment and really, you know, make some sort of educated decision. Uh, certainly, from my perspective, you know, having joined up conversations with people around that third topic, particularly, uh, is is very important to be able to demonstrate to a, a potential client, you know, their, you know, how valuable they'll be in the, in an ongoing multi cloud environment. I think that's very, very important. So, uh, yeah, great top tips, and thank for being, thank you for being on the training show this week. It's a pleasure, man. <laughs> and have a great time in Vegas with your talk tonight. Yeah, you got it. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Heliard. Uh, we're on all the social media as well. All the links are below in the description box if you're watching this on YouTube, so check that out. Uh, and also remember to like, subscribe, and comment. So we like to get your feedback as well. And we're all over Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So, uh, you know, connect with us, become part of the, the Cloud Tribe. Uh, and we're also on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to us on the podcast whether you're on iPhone Android whatever it may be uh, you can check us out there as well so you don't have to just watch us talking uh, which is always cool uh, we've also got some great blogs as well so again a link in the description box will take you there to the website check out there David writes some fantastic content for us uh, which we really really appreciate it's all exclusive to us as well so check out there you won't be able to read any of that sort of stuff anywhere else by David which is always nice um, so yeah check that out and uh, yeah thanks for watching until next week